66 and open it to 33. So Psalm 66 and Psalm 33. And we started, I think it was four weeks ago, because I think Brother Farber was in, in the middle of, of this. So I think we've uh, preached on uh, the, I guess, theme, true happiness, three different times now, or this will be the third time. And I think he was in there as well. Uh, but today we're going to look at uh, true happiness, our soul. Uh, we saw, I think, in the beginning where that God created man in his own image. And of course, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's a trinity there. And so uh, we, we're created with that kind of same pattern there, body, soul, and spirit. And we saw uh, last week, we talked about the spirit. And we saw how that it was, uh, how that we, you know, fellowshiped and uh, had contact with God through the spirit. And of course, we'll see here in just a minute in John 4, uh, that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So that's kind of how it was. And so, but tonight we're going to look at the soul, and we'll read these two verses, and then I'll repeat a little bit of what I just said in, uh, in the introduction and get into it. Uh, but a lot, a lot of mentality out there in the world today, they say, okay, you can either be happy or you can be right with God. Uh, I think you can have both, okay? Uh, you know, I'm, just, I'm saved, miserable. I'm right with God, miserable. No, you, you can have both. I mean, we can be right with God, saved, all that kind of stuff, and still be happy. But the devil tells you you can't. Uh, he lies to you and says, you know, the only way you can be happy is, you know, be wide open or on fire or doing, you know, something crazy and sinful. Uh, that's the only way you can have happiness. That's a lie. <laughs> He's been lying from the beginning and, and so forth. So you can... Be saved and happy. You can be right with God and happy. You can be living life and be happy uh, and so forth. So that's what we're looking for is true happiness. And we saw uh, in the beginning, let's read these two verses uh, before I get too, too wound up here. All right, Psalm 33, 20. Psalm 33, 20. Uh, it says here, our soul. So, of course, it's in the Bible that we have a soul. <laughs> and it says here, our soul waiteth for the Lord. So this is the way God created us. He wants our soul to be waiting on God, or in other words, need God, or, or, or you know, have that relationship with God. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. And so, of course, God created us where, we're, where our soul is longing for Him, and we're waiting on Him. Uh, but then He created where He's the help. He's the one that satisfies our soul. Of course, the world, our flesh, and even the devil will come at us and say, no, 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 the only way you're going to be true happy, truly happy is if your soul is involved in this. And we're going to see those things tonight. Uh, but that, that's a lie from the devil. Uh, our soul was created, and God says that he, it, it, we ought to wait for him, and then he's our help. So the only way we're going to find true happiness is let him be our help. Nothing else. Uh, there's, a, there's some helpful things out there, but it needs to be wrapped up in him. And then let's look over at 66. Psalm 66, verse 9. Psalm 66, verse 9. And it says here, Which holdeth our soul in life, and suffered not our feet to be moved. So in other words, our, our soul was created that God could help it and actually help us to be happy. But then it was also created, and God says that you know, I'm in, you know, we're in His hand. Uh, we're in Jesus' hand, and God's hand. We cannot be plucked out, and our feet shall not be moved. Uh, and, and so forth. And of course, the devil's going to try to get us to slip. The devil's going to try to get us to fall. Uh, but God, if we'll let him control our soul, he'll hold us right there and we won't slip, we won't fall, and we'll be held. And so, of course, that's, that's the design of the soul and that's where you're going to be truly happy. So we saw three times, I guess four, three sermons ago, four weeks ago, we saw that, okay, true happiness is, again, it goes against the grain. It goes against what we hear out in the world. But it says to be crucified with Christ. This is the only way you're going to be happy, is to be crucified with Christ. That doesn't sound joyful. That doesn't sound like something that you know, our, our flesh wants. Uh, but it's, it's here to be crucified with Christ. In other words, the principle is to die to self and to say what Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. And so, of course, Jesus like, okay, I'm only going to be truly happy if I'm doing what you created me to do, God, not what I want to do. And so, again, that goes against the flesh. That goes against the world. The devil will lie about it. But God says, hey, I created you to be crucified with Christ, to die to self, to do God's will, not your own. And if you find that place, you'll be truly happy. Second, we saw that we needed an understanding. 
In other words, we needed God's point of view. Uh, the world says you can only be happy if you've got this much money or if you've got this possessions or if you've achieved this. But God says, hey, you can be happy if you just have the understanding that you're, you're a sinner. Your sins, you deserve to go to hell. But understand this. God didn't want anybody to perish. So He sent His Son <laughs> and to die for you, take your place, and, and, and you can have that salvation. Get that understanding. And then you don't have to get it again and again and again and again. You get it one time. You're saved. You're born again. And so you can have the assurance of that. You know, I sinned last week, but I didn't get unsaved. I, I, need, to, I need to confess that sin and have my uh, fellowship restored, but I don't have to start another relationship again. I can be assured of that. And then eternal security. It's forever. <laughs> We're going to live forever. And then we have to just accept that. That's the hard thing for some of us. Uh, when we look and see how much God does love us, and we look at ourselves in the mirror and our, our sins and our lifestyle, and we're like, I don't, I don't deserve that. We're right when we say that. But God, is He cannot lie. And He says in the Bible, if you'll ask me to forgive you, I will, and I will justify you like you never did that. It does not compute. All right, I can't forget it, but He can. And He says He does. Uh, far as east is from the west, and, uh, and, and he puts it there. So I, gotta, I have just to accept that. And then once I realize that I'm saved, I got, I'm got, I'm look, I got God's understanding, his point of view. I'm saved. I'm always going to be saved. Uh, I'm going to live forever. I have to accept God's forgiveness, and then I totally commit myself to him. That's how we get God's point of view. So now tonight we're going to look at our soul. And our soul, uh, and again, there are some studies about the human body, and there's been some advancements and things like that, and uh, there's some uh, psychology out there and things like that that, that are, you know, it's in the Bible too, <laughs> uh, and so forth. But what they try to do, though, they try to exclude God out of it. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at these things about our soul, and they are real things. Emotions are real. Okay? Uh, some of you, you've probably experienced several different types of emotions today. All right? You might have gotten mad. Uh, you might have gotten glad. You might have been sad. I can't rhyme anymore. Uh, but you, you might have cried. Uh, you might have gritted your teeth. You might have raised your hands. You might have clapped. We, 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 emotions are real. And God's like saying, I'm not saying, you know, I want you to be robots with no emotions. You just go around, please God, please God, please God. I'm happy. I'm No. <laughs> We have emotions, and God knows that. And that's what he said. I created you like that. So what you need to do is not try to find fix, fixes for that emotion outside of me. Okay? Uh, you know, praying will help. Uh, trusting God will help. Uh, you know, doing things that make you happy will help sometimes. And, uh, and putting in things in perspective and, and getting counsel and reading a book or get some advice, things like that. All those will help your emotions. But God's just saying, I created your soul it waits on me, and I can be the help. So the most important thing, Satan's fine with you might, you know, you know, he tries to keep you from getting saved, but if you do get saved, he kind of accepts that and says, all right, but I'm still going to mess with them. Because <laughs> if, if they're saved and they know they're saved and they're happy about it, they might influence somebody else to want what they've got, and so I've got to mess that up. So he tries to mess us up emotionally. So we're going to look at that. We're going to see happiness, sadness, frustration, hostility, anxiety, depression, these are all for real things. And God knows that. But He's like, I can help you with all those things. So the Spirit was God, uh, our consciousness, and that was the spiritual aspect we saw last week. Today we're looking at that soul, and it's, this is our self-conscious. All right? Our spirit, we got to worship God. He's a spirit. we got to worship Him in spirit and truth. That's God-conscious. That's spiritually. Our soul is our self-conscious. And so we, we have a conscience, and it's not Jiminy Cricket, okay? Uh, it's, it's for real. We have emotions. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I'm sad. Or, man, that was awesome. That was great. And so we, we experience emotion. And so we're going to look at that tonight. And so our soul is how that we relate to others, all right? Our spirit is how we relate to God. Our soul is how we relate to others. And there are some of us that we have this, uh, you know, you're known. Uh, okay, you know, don't talk to them first thing in the morning. All right, why? Because emotionally they will bite your head off. All right, they always get up on the wrong side of the bed. Let them have breakfast, let them have a cup of coffee, then talk. Okay, why? That's just how we deal with people. Uh, you know, you, you get, uh, 
I don't know, don't talk to them about their favorite team, and especially if their favorite team loses, give them a day or two, then they'll come back around. Our emotions is how we relate to people, and God knows that. He said, look, I can help you not be offensive. I can help you not be depressed. I can help you to get through that and not have anxiety. I, I can help you. And so that's what he's saying. So our soul, we're going to battle many things. Ephesians 6, 12 says this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And it goes on to say, but against principalities and the, and the power of the air, things like that. So we do a lot of battle to try to be happy. We're going to battle our emotions because they're real. And all these other things we're going to mention tonight, we're going to battle them. And that's what he's talking about when it says here, look, Satan's going to attack you in every area he can think of. And your emotions is one of them. Uh, secondly, we see here we will battle inferiority. Uh, you know, some people, they don't battle that. They, they, they are, they're just glowing with self-confidence. Right? But a lot of people and most people, they battle with some type of inferiority. Uh, I, I don't measure up with that. And that's what David was saying. Uh, he's like, you know, I was a man after God's own heart and I blew it. And it took me a long time to get back to being after God's own heart again. But he, he didn't have that strong confidence anymore. He, he faced some inferiority. And uh, obviously God's like, I can help you with that. So if we have inferiority, complexes if you want to call them that, or if we've done something that we, we think that we don't measure up, and that's what David's like, when I get to heaven and I get God, that glorified body, I won't disappoint God anymore. Uh, and I'm paraphrasing that verse. But uh, anyway, it says here, inferiority. So some battle this to the point that it hinders our relationships. I can't, I can't, I can't. You know people like that. I can't do that. No, 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 I can't, I can't. And uh, wow, we're battling inferiority. And God's like, I'm helping. I'm, you can do all things through Christ. <laughs> uh, you can. Uh, and so we battle that inferiority. And uh, I don't deserve this. We're exactly right. All we deserve is hell. Uh, so sometimes when God loves us so much and blesses us so much, we're like, I just don't deserve it. And it sucks the happiness out of us. Or we got to accept it. Right? God loves you, <laughs> and God wants you happy. Uh, and don't be in, inferior about that. He, he said, you know, what they say, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, perfect, but I'm just forgiven. That's what we got to accept. And so God says that. And so it says here in Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ. Because sometimes when we're battling that emotion of inferiority, we, we, we compensate, they say. We compensate with something else. Some people, when, they're, when they get in front of people or something and, and they feel inferior, I, I can't talk, and they, they start laughing. <laughs> and, and, what are you laughing? I don't know, I just can't help it, I'm just laughing. What are they doing? They're trying to compensate that they're inferior. You know, some people, they're, they're crude. They, 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 they run off at the mouth with crude sayings and stuff like that. And what are they doing? They're trying to cover up that inferiority. Some people get mad. I can't believe it's sir. Chill, man. <laughs> Right? What are they doing? They're compensating for that inferior. So it's for reals. So what God's saying is, hey, hey, I can help you with that. I can help you be sin. You, I can help you be angry, but I can help you not sin during that. You've heard that verse. Uh, I can I can help you with feeling inferior, and I, I why? Because but I can I, you can do all things through me. Let me help you. Uh, I just don't know how to relate to people. I can help you with that. You know, iron sharpeneth iron. Uh, you've got to pray and love. I, I can help you with that. So that's what God's saying is I can help you with inferiority. Next one, insecurity. Similar, uh, but we'll battle with insecurities. Uh, and what insecurities is, it, it promotes these other things or points out these things. Sometimes it's jealousy. Uh, you know, they're, they're insecure or they're jealous. Well, I don't have that or I can't do what they can. And, and they do that. And then if they don't handle that, then accusations start flying. <laughs> You know, I, I can't, I don't have what they have, and it's just wrong. And I mean, they just start, and God's like, whoa, 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 I can help you be content. <laughs> I can help you live in what, what, you know, what sort of state you, you find yourself in. I can help you with that. So uh, insecurity is for real. We get jealous, and we start throwing out accusations, and then we're ineffective. That's what the devil wants out of a Christian. I, you know, you're saved. I can't do anything about that. But I want you to be ineffective. I want to suck your joy out of you. I want you to be inferior. I want you to be insecure. I, I want you to go around the man. No, but God says, I want you to live. 
I want you to be excited. I want you to be happy. Things like that. So we, he says, I can help you with uh, your emotions, inferiority, and, and insecurity. Here's another one, inadequacy. Very similar. But this is th this emotion that we feel. I can't do it. I, but I, I can, but I'm not real good at it. And uh, this is what we do. We make excuses. So it causes us not to be able to cope with life. Uh, maybe even at home. Uh, maybe at work. Uh, in our church life. This is what I, I just don't measure up. That church would be better off without me. That's a lie from the devil. <laughs> All right, my, my home would just be better off without me. A lie from the devil. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we, that's what he says. So all these emotions we might feel, inferior, inferiority, uh, in, insecurity, inadequacy. Here's another one that we battle with. <laughs> and uh, especially if you've got a past like I do and like Paul had, guilt. Guilt. Guilt will suck the life out of you. All right. I did this when I was 12, and I said this when I was 15, and I did. But if you ask God, if that was all before you got saved, and you got saved, it's like it never happened. <laughs> all right. And if it is after you got saved, if you first John 1, 9 it, it's just like it never happened. But the devil will just bring that up, and our, even our own emotions will bring it up. We're living with that guilt. We're living with that guilt. And, and the devil's fine with that because you're going to be ineffective. You're going to be, I'm inferior, I'm, I'm insecure, I'm inadequate, I, I, I don't deserve this. And that's where the devil wants us to be. But God's like, I created your soul like that. <laughs> and if you'll let me, I'll help you with all those emotions, even guilt. Because real guilt is because of a sin. All right, if it's, if it's real guilt, if it's conviction of the Holy Spirit, that guilt, God wants us to feel that. All right, because we've done something wrong, or we've thought something wrong, or we've participated in something wrong, and we, we feel dirty about it. We feel guilty. That's a good guilt. Because God's like, you know, I think the Bible, I don't think, I know the Bible says this. That's one way that we know that we're saved. Because <laughs> if we can sin and we don't feel wrong, we don't feel guilt. Ew. <laughs> but the Bible says, and again, I'm paraphrasing here, if we can sin and we feel that guilt immediately, not praise God that I did that, but praise God God knows I did that, and he's convicted me for it. <laughs> you know, and so that brings us happiness. <laughs> and so we need to 1 John 1, 9 it. Again, I'm not saying do it over and over and over and over. God, you know, just like uh, a real dad, you keep doing the same thing over and over and over, the punishment will get more severe. But anyway, we have that real guilt, and we need, the cure of it is to put it under the blood. Confess it. Say that was a sin. Okay, this is a, this is a step. God's like, I'll help your soul if you'll confess it. That was wrong. And then, not only just confess it, not just say, that was wrong, I shouldn't have done that, but ask God to forgive you for it. Hey, God, I lied. That was wrong. Please forgive me. Here's the next step. Accept His forgiveness. All right, just like you put faith in, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe that verse. I call on Him. I'm saved. I know it. Leave me alone, devil. You put your faith in that. But you also have to put your faith in these verses that says, if you'll just ask me, I'll forgive you. Justified. <laughs> Clean. When you stand in front of me, I see Jesus Christ. we got to accept that. And so that real guilt, deal with it. And here's some imaginary guilt. <laughs> it's for real. All right? Just like inadequacy, you know, all those other things are real imaginary guilt we just feel it why are you guilty i don't know i just i just feel i just feel guilty and what the devil will do he'll come over and says yeah you've probably committed the unpardonable sin that's what he'll do he'll just yeah i'm telling you if you have committed the unpardonable sin you would not be here all right you blaspheme the holy ghost you're gone. <laughs> uh, God will take you out. So if you're still here, we got to trust that what that book says, that God still has a plan for you. Don't have that imaginary guilt because we're looking for it. Man, if I could just find out that, that sin that's causing me to feel like that. If I could find it, and I would, I, would, I would confess it, and I would ask God to forgive me. So we just go through life miserable with that imaginary guilt on us. And God's like, hey, 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 I could help you with that too. So imaginary guilt... It feels real. <laughs> and, and Satan will make sure of it. And so we confess and we confess and we confess, but we still feel the guilt. He'll lie to you. 
So that imaginary guilt, it says here, it springs up from a lack of love on our part. I'll show you what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ. Right? God loves us. And if you can get a hold of how much He loves you, the Bible goes on to say in 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ, it constrains us. <laughs> All right? It kind of forces me to be happy. <laughs> it kind of forces me to deal with this. Why? Because Jesus loves me so much. And then the other part is Acceptance. you got to accept the forgiveness. It's hard. Why? Because that guilt just rides you. If you've done something wrong to a friend, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, I, I do. Then the next time you see them, you're still kind of sheepish. <laughs> I feel inadequate to be your friend. <laughs> I feel insecure a little bit. They said they forgave you. Now, if they forgive you, they said they forgive you and they bring it up 24-7 <laughs> and they dog you for it, they're, God's not like that. God, when He says, I forgive you, <laughs> you don't have to prove it. Okay? I, I just forgive you. Just accept it. And then let me help you. And so that, 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 that He says, I created your soul like that. And so, you know, we, we say, well, I don't belong or uh, the world would be better off or uh, I'm just making things worse. Put your faith in those verses that says God loves you. Now, the next thing. We saw all those things. Inadequacy and, 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 and um, all the, I can't remember them all now. Uh, but we see here, God accepts, or God, we have to accept God's love and forgiveness. Here's another verse. Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, 6. So we saw a while ago, if we will accept God like it is, it will constrain us. Live the Christian life. Be happy about it. That's what, that was, that's what makes me go is Jesus' love for me. Here's another one, Philippians 4, 6. Be careful. Now, obviously, be careful means, all right, be careful when you leave, be careful when you go home, be careful when you're doing it. No, no, no. That translation there just means be, not to be anxious. Or here's a, here's a you know, nowadays, don't worry. You want me to sing that song for you? Don't worry, be happy. All right, that's a great hymn of the faith, right? Uh, but we see here, it says here, be careful for nothing. God's saying, hey, don't be anxious. Don't be freaking out. Don't be inadequate. Uh, don't be, you know, have insufficiencies, things like that. Don't, don't let your emotions go crazy. Be careful for nothing. Here it is. But in every thing. How many things? Everything. Well, what about everything? Well, what about my friend? Everything. God says, you know, don't freak out. Don't get all emotional. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry. Be happy. By prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let your requests be made known to God. So again, if somebody says, well, you know, I have in my hand, you know, a cure, a cure for every type of cancer out there. Give it to me. <laughs> Give it to my cousin. Give it to my uncle. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> but if we's like, if, if there's something that we could do to always be happy, tell me. Right there. If you're feeling any type of emotion, happiness, sadness, anxious, uh, you know, all that, all that stuff, God just says here, come talk to me about it. Come talk to me about it. And so, again, sometimes we'll vent is what they call it. Or we'll, we'll go on a mad posting spree. And we just gotta, we just gotta let off some steam. That's what the world says. That'll make you happy. I've had some venting processes before in my life. Didn't make me happy. I mean, I've just let them have it. <laughs> I gave them a piece of my mind, and that's dangerous because I don't have very many pieces. All right? But I gave them a piece of my mind. But I still didn't feel anything. But I went and got on my knees and said, Lord, uh, mostly I'm a wreck. <laughs> I'm mad. I'm sad. I'm frustrated. And I just start talking to him. And the Holy Spirit starts talking to me. <laughs> I've gotten up from that and felt very happy. That's what he's saying. He's like, all this is for real. You're not weird by feeling all these. And you're not, not right with God because you feel all this. But he's saying, hey, you just come to me. Everything. You bathe it in prayer and supplication. And here it is with thanksgiving. Sometimes I'll go say, God, I want to talk about this because I'm mad. And God says, hey, I want to talk about what I blessed you with last week. Well, that's not what I want to talk about. 
but he reminds me to be thankful and say, be thankful for this and this and this and this and this. Yeah, you got some a little bit of frustrating over here, but if, it, if you're putting the, all this stuff you're thankful for on one side and that little bit of frustrating right there, whoo, be happy. <laughs> all right, that's just life. We're going we're to experience that. But look at all this that you can be thankful for. Then he goes on to say, with fear and doubt, all these are pervasive. They will cause us to wreck our own life. And they, we can wreck our testimony. That's the devil's plan. He wants you to get frustrated. He wants you to have anxiety. <laughs> he wants you to get hostile uh, and all this stuff. And what, what does it do? It ruins our testimony. It ruins our relationship with the Lord as far as our fellowship. So all the devil wants to do, he wants to use all those things that we looked at tonight to rob you of joy and to rob you of true happiness. So unfortunately, our hostility it usually comes... When it comes out, it's aimed at somebody that doesn't deserve it. I have to admit that. <laughs> my, my wife, oh, she's, she's a godly woman, and she has to put up with me. And she's, she's right in my crosshairs a lot of times. Well, you, she hasn't done anything. <laughs> but here, <laughs> I'm unloading. Uh, yeah. But what God wants to do instead of doing that, I made your soul. I'm your help. Come talk to me. Don't take it out on, and we can just fill in the blanks. Come talk to me. That's what he's saying. So we see uh, having, having a handle on these things. A lot of times we, we, this first part of it, the inferiority and the anxiety and the hostility and all that stuff, all these emotions that we deal with, we're like, okay, I, I got to get a grip on this. And, you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to levitate and meditate. That's going to help me not be emotional. Or I'm going, to, I'm going to go for a long walk in the woods. And I'm going to get to where I can, I can not be so emotional. And, I, and I, I'm going to go fishing. Sign me up. All right. That just, that just helps me release. Okay, but what, what has Satan done? He said the walk's more important than God. The fishing's more important than God. You know, read the book is more important than God. Meditating is more important than God. But God's like, hey, hey, hey. I created your soul. Come here. I can help you with it. So he wants us to get there. So we, we see here we have to have an outlet. And that's true. That's why the Bible says, be angry and sin not. The soft answer turneth away wrath. There's, there's things to put into place that will help us with these emotions. But God needs to be not, I'm perfect at giving the soft answer. So what have we done? We've put ourselves and our, our ability to give the soft answer ahead of God. And God's like, look, just talk to me and help, let me help you do that. And so that's, the devil's like, I'm good with you doing anything. Meditating, walking, praying, uh, you know, anything. Just put your, even your quiet time with God can become more important than God. <laughs> well, I'm talking it. No. Sometimes we're just going through that checklist and you know, it's, it's more about that. So we see that... Uh, we ought to pray, bathe it with prayer. So some of these, some people live in a fantasy land. And just like we talked about that imaginary guilt, here's another thing. Some people live in a fantasy land. And what are they doing? They're saying, if I can just get to this point in my Christian life, then I'll be happy. Again, Satan's took our eyes on, I just got to get to there. Instead of putting our eyes on Jesus. So again, we, we see that, that this fantasy land, if I can just be, you know, you know I, when, I'm, when I've been a Christian 15 years, then, then I'll be great. Everything's going to be wonderful. Me and God, we're going to be like this. God's going to be using me. No. Huh? God's awesome right now. <laughs> He's awesome today. Bathe everything in prayer. So we see some of these symptoms are for real. And just like we've all heard, you're treating the symptoms. Hey, you got to get into the root of the problem. You're treating the symptoms. We're treating the symptoms. We're talking about the issue. And there's a lot of people like that. They've been talking about this issue that they've had for years. And they just keep on talking, keep on talking. And other people like want to run because <laughs> we're talking about this issue. All right, so again, that's what the devil's done. Talk about it. Get your feelings out there. You've got emotions. You need to tell people. And sometimes you do. I'm not saying any of that's wrong. Tell your wife, tell your husband, tell your friend. Iron sharpeneth iron. I can pray for you. I, I'll bear one another's burdens. I get all that. 
But that's what Satan will do. He'll say, hey, look, you need to tell, 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 tell. But what God's saying is, come to me. So take the issue, uh, and, and it says here, putting a biblical principle into action and claiming a promise is how you're going to fix it. Talking it to death is not going to fix it. All right? R- you know, running in circles, uh, trying to do something else. But the Bible says here, look, hey, come to God. He's the one that created our soul. He gives us some biblical principles. He gives us some promises. We've got to put them into practice, claim them. Then we're on our way. So it will keep us from uh, going in depression. It will keep us from lashing out. Uh, it will keep us from beating ourselves up. It will keep us from beating others up. Again, a lot of this, inferior, inferiority, hostility, all those things that we talked about. Everybody, Anybody ever had a tension headache? They're for real. All right, stuff goes, starts freaking out. People are going nuts. and uh, I mean, it just starts right here. You're like, oh, it hurts. Tension headaches are for real. All right. But God said, whoa, whoa, whoa. Again, I, take, take ibuprofen, take whatever you want. Help. Uh, I'm fine. Migraines, nervous stomach, stress. All this stuff can cause for real physical problems. So if you don't get your emotions in check, it can start going all the way over into the physical part. So some doctors even say 60 to 80 percent of uh, my patients, their ailments are caused by this emotional and psychological conflict. And it turns into other stuff. And so a lot of them will say, you know, I've had them tell me they need to see you more than they need to see me. I'm the whoa, no, 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 I'm not the answer. They need to see him more than they need to see you a lot of times. Now, I didn't say don't go to the doctor, (laughs) rub dirt on it, things like that. I'm just saying, ask God to come. You know, as you're going to say, I got all these migraines, doc, give me some medicine. Say, okay, Lord, what about all this stuff? Help me to go to him, and and I'll show you. Uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, we already read this. Be careful for nothing, but everything... By prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So talk to Him about it. Listen to what verse 7 says. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. That's the recipe to help you with any type of emotion. Go to Him and talk to Him about it. And then realize that peace of God, which passes all understanding... I've seen people going through things where some people would be like absolutely freaking out. And you're like, how are you doing that? I guarantee they've been talking to God about it. I guarantee they've put into practice what God's word says to do about it. It's not that they're numb. That's what a lot of people say. You Christians are just numb. You don't have emotions. You don't have feelings. You know, you don't this and you don't that. Hmm. (laughs) No, we, we... it says there, the peace of God which passes. I don't understand that. How can you do that? Because God is the one that keeps our hearts and our minds. So the problem is self-centeredness. A selfish person, a self-centered person, they're, they're worried about their emotions. I'm inferior. I'm inadequate. Uh, I'm hostile. I'm angry. I'm mad. I, 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 I. <laughs> That's what Satan said. I will be like the most high. I will ascend. He had an eye problem too. So we see here, it it is good. Uh, It could be a good self or a bad self or a a self somewhere in between. Doesn't matter to Satan as long as self is in the center. And that's what we do. I've got to get myself thinking right, behaving right, behaving. I've got to do that. So I I check, check, check. I'm a good self. I don't this and I don't that and I don't this and I don't that. I got myself in line. And so myself is in the center. So it helps me deal with those things, those emotions, but God's nowhere in the picture. So we have to put God, uh, you know, self-centered people, it's kind of repugnant to God. Uh, God wants us to be, uh, put Him first, that in all things He might have preeminence. Seek ye first. So, so even if we build ourselves up and get to, get to where we can handle some of those things, I just got to be a better person. Uh, I got I to I gotta change this and I got to change that. I, I'm working on it. I'm getting there. I'm getting stronger. That's fine with Satan because now we're self-centered. We're getting to be a good person and we're going to help to basically depend on ourselves to get all that. It was just going to get worse. So God's plan is this. 
when I am weak, I am strong. I mean, there's so many principles in the Bible that goes against our own grain. Definitely this world's grain. But the Bible says right there, when I am, when I am weak, I am strong. That makes no sense. <laughs> but when I am weak, God, I, I, can't, I can't handle these emotions. I, I, can't, I can't treat people right. I can't behave right. I can't do this. I need you. He shows up. A couple of other verses and we'll be finished. 1 Corinthians 4.10 For we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ, and we are weak, but ye are strong, ye are honorable, and we are despised. We've got to have that mindset. God says, hey, I created your, your uh, soul and all that emotion, but you've got to have this mindset. Another one, 2 Corinthians 12.10. 2 Corinthians 12, 10. Therefore, I take pleasure. Again, when I'm weak, I'm strong. Makes no sense. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm despised, but God's honorable. Uh, it goes against the grain. <laughs> therefore, Paul was telling him, therefore, I take pleasure. In other words, this makes me happy. Infirmities. Reproaches. Necessities. Persecutions distresses so in other words he didn't go all inadequate all hostile all emotional he's just like I, I take pleasure in these things why i think his his mindset was all I, all that can happen to me because all it's going to do is make me know him more and that's what paul said so paul had this mindset so self is reduced to nothing and christ can be everything and you could truly be happy let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. But God shall supply all your needs. Monetarily, physically, spiritually, and even that soul, emotionally. God can supply all, his, all your needs according to His riches and glory. So when we, when we make Christ the center of our life, He will give us what we need. He will direct us where we need to go. And He will empower us with what we need to live the Christian life. And so we saw three things now. True happiness. Crucified with Christ. Makes no sense, but it's in the Bible. God's understanding. I just have to accept it. That just makes no sense, but it's in the Bible. Here's another one. <laughs> Get self out of the way. And let God be in the center. And He can help our emotions. Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for your word. And Lord, uh, Lord, I know sometimes you lay these things on my heart to talk about. <laughs> so please don't think, make people think that uh, I think I have all that figured out. <laughs> I'm preaching to me just as like I'm preaching to anybody else. But Lord, help us all realize, Lord, that you need to be in the center of our life. And if we can get you there, you'll help us with all these emotions that we face. And then you'll get glorified for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm.